this house today. God has something special for you today. We the people rejoice in the God of our salvation. We the people of God rejoice in the God of our salvation. Father, we give you the worship. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor in Jesus' matchless, powerful, mighty name. Section 1, Section 2, Section 3, all over America, all over this universe, 195 nations, all over this place today. Raise your voice and give God a pure shout of glory and victory and praise. Thank you, Father God. Thank you what you're doing.
Jesus. Fire of God. My God, his anointing is getting stronger. His anointing is getting fire of God. Save and deliver. Heal, Father, we pray. Reconciliation, we pray, Father God. We declare you well from the crown of your head. We declare you well from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Somebody online comment in Jesus' name. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, the praise. Amen. And if you want to have breakfast, give us another shout of praise. of Encounter Church this past week. Come on, somebody. You know, as I've said before, if and, and these are people that are not just liking. These are people that are participating. Uh, this Wednesday, we had over 500 comments alone, 500 comments. So it's amazing how God has taken COVID and turned this thing around. And uh, we're just getting so many people tuning in, even in now. And, uh, but we had over 500 people engaging with us. And as I've said before, that there would not be room enough in this building. How many know that? Right. There would not be room enough in this building to accommodate everybody. So we thank the Lord for everybody engaging. It's not about numbers. It's about reaching lives. Yes. It's about reaching lives. So, Doc, I, I'd, I'd like for you to minister in November. Next, next month is Thanksgiving month. And as you know, he was with us last week. But Nicole was here playing keyboard, and uh, he shared a few words. He was so kind, so so loving man. But this man is a theologian. This man is a theologian. And I would like for him to just be loosed 
and freed up to just minister the word. And plus, he was planning on uh, going to Africa. You know, he has a Bible college in Africa. He's the president and founder of Midwest Bible College in Milwaukee. And I've known him for many years. And, uh, but we want him back to be with us. And some of you are commenting that you want him back as well. But we want him back with us because he's believing God to go to Africa. And uh, he has a Bible college in Africa as well. He has them in many countries, even in Ukraine now. People are, are tuning in from the Ukraine, guys, for, for Dr. Yes. Bowen uh, and his yes. Bible college. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, people in Sweden right now, God bless you, Sweden. Welcome. Ireland right now, welcome. England yes, right now, Lord. welcome. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. So anyway, people in Florida right now, in Texas, we love you from coast to coast by the power of the Holy Ghost. So things have changed around, and it's a good thing. Somebody shout a good thing. Good. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so Doc, I'd like for you, let's talk this week, and I'd like for you to be here in November and minister, and we want to help you to reach Africa to the glory of God, reaching all those students there. And if anyone's interested in Midwest Bible College, you can uh, find out more information about that through Dr. Bowen. Uh, Nicole, if you're watching, if you want to comment the information of the Bible College, you can do that. Or, Doc, you can put that on comment. On, just go to Jim DePalma. Well, you're already there. And uh, you can put the information about Midwest Bible College. I know, Pastor Eddie, you have that information as well. You can get your associate's degree. You can get your bachelor's degree. You can get your master's degree. You can do it all online. And at the end of the day, you can do it, excuse me, you can do it debt-free because of the way they work out their payment plans to the glory of the Lord. So we're so grateful. We want to see them back here next month. And I'll just sit back and just take a little break and, uh, and just get ministered to because I love when we have guest speakers that come in and I receive a lot. And when I say guest speakers, all of our speakers, because for our anniversary service just a few weeks ago, our precious April Wells ministered at our 29th anniversary, and we had a wonderful time with her. Her and Charles are doing well. They're doing tremendous. Their beautiful girls are doing wonderful. I tell you, it's amazing when people, you know, just love each other. And Oh, there you go. You leave these comments. We love it so much. But we already have our guest speaker, should the Lord tarry. Should the Lord tarry. Now, if the rapture takes place, if the rapture takes place, because we still believe in the return of the Lord, right? Yes. So I promise, there you go, hey, Pastor Eddie, thank you. MidwestBibleCollege.org, there you go. Thank you, Pastor Eddie, for doing that. But I, I, told, I told Mitch, I promised Mitch that if the Lord returns, I got to come up with somebody new every time, you know. I promised Mitch that if the Lord returns, he can take over the church, all right? <laughs> No, you're going to go up. 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 You're going to I know you're going to go up. You know, the Bible says, know them which are among you. So I know you're going up. So if the Lord returns, we'll just have Pastor Eddie take over the church. Okay. Hey, someday he's going to be senior pastor anyway, right? You guys didn't know that? Someday he's going to be senior pastor. We had a meeting at my house the other night. We had a good time. Paul Doherty, God bless you. Man of God, this is a theologian from Arkansas. Paul, we love you. A week and a half ago, two weeks ago, he fell and he broke his neck. He fell and he broke his neck. He's in the 70s. He's a young man. And he fell. And he, Alan, God bless you. Give our love to Bishop Ray Allen and Dolly are not with us. She's getting better and better and better. Amen. You know, guys, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, we're family. Dolly's heart was getting weaker and weaker. Now it's getting stronger and stronger. It is, it is back to normal and beyond. Come on, somebody. So, Alan, Alan you're in, uh, in, in, is it Michigan that they're in? Michigan, are you in? With Dr. Uh, with Bishop Ray uh, from the Philippines. I minister at Bishop Ray's church, so you're there. So give Bishop Ray our love. Please give Bishop Ray our Bishop our love. Give Bishop Ray our love. Please do. Uh, and, and give your girlfriend a hug for us. Okay, Alan says he's going up. Yeah. And Alan's saying, I will pass. Isn't it amazing, guys, that we have church now? Here we have got you all together as one family. Okay. But, 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 but Paul Doherty, 
This is a great man of God, a great man of God. And we love him with all of our heart. And you know Dennis Goldsworthy Davis in San Antonio. He's one of Dennis's leaders, one of Dennis's mentors. This is a great man of God. And he fell and he he just, oh, he showed me a picture and I thought, oh my Jesus, have mercy. So even now, Father, we declare healing, healing upon Paul Doherty, upon the pastor in Arkansas, Father, my friend, my colleague. We declare him well in Jesus' name, Father God. We declare Bishop Ray, who's visiting from the Philippines. We declare him well and blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare Dolly well and healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And all those engaging from coast to coast by the power of the Holy Ghost. And in this house, we declare them well and blessed in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Guys, let me just give you now a little update about Hurricane Ian. And uh, I wish... I had really good news to share with you. Well, I have really good news to share, and that which you already know, that thank the Lord, my family, my immediate family is safe and sound. Thank God. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no structural damage to their home in central, in the central west central part of Florida. They're all safe and sound, and I thank the Lord for that. But I still have friends that are missing that we have not heard from yet. And uh, in southwest Florida. And uh, that's a very intimate place for Pastor Joni and I, and it has been for the last 35 years. And uh, they've just been totally decimated. It's going to take them years to rebuild. Right now, the last count I heard was 153 that are dead, uh, that have passed on into, I would hope the Lord in heaven. Uh, but right now, we have six people, friends, loved ones that are unaccounted for to this day. And we've tried to reach out. We have no response. And one of them is our dear Martha Gayford, is our dear Martha Gayford. And you know, she had a birthday this past week. Do you know how old, you know how young she is? 104. 104, Martha Gayford. And you talk to her and it's like, whoa. Nancy, are you here? Nancy, Nancy, it seemed like yesterday we were at our 100th birthday party, right? Yeah. Seemed like yesterday we were at our 100th birthday party. But uh, over, 100, over 100, 150 people have lost their lives in southwest Florida there. And uh, Jeff and Terry, you know the exact area that I'm talking about because you've been there. It's decimated completely. And as you guys know, it's been a very, very... It's been my second home, frankly. And, uh, but we're believing for total restoration, total restoration. Yeah. Governor DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, who's a man of God. Governor DeSantis is a man of God. He said, we will rebuild. I know President Biden was out there yesterday as well. But Governor DeSantis, that man, just he just, and we thank God for all those in authority, but Governor DeSantis, he tore it up yesterday. He said, we're going to rebuild that bridge quickly. We're going to rebuild that island and Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach as well. And we're going to come back with a vengeance in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But for all those, all those who've been affected by any hurricane, tornado, storm, or just storms of life, we thank God for their healing in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus. You know, today is the start of the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is a time, yeah, this is a time of rejoicing and giving God praise and honor and honor. So, Mitch, let's start with you here, because last week we, we read all those testimonies. Weren't those incredible testimonies we shared with you last week? Yes? Right? So, Mitch, what happened to you there? Give him a mic, Joe. What happened to you, big boy? I ended up with a ro uh, rotator. Old age. Hey, I'm on Medicare. <laughs> right behind you. <laughs> so, so you had surgery. I, I had the, the rotator, the rotator tendon had to be replaced, or the laser, whatever they did there, and then something in the back that they had to take from my 
lower back back to my shoulder. All right. Okay. But they said I should be good within six months. Within six months? I think even sooner. Yeah. Yeah. God's, God's timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect. Grandma Vella, can you come on up here? Can you come up? Are you, are you able to walk up slowly? Come on, give Mama Vella a big God bless you. Give her a big God bless you. We forgot to give you guys the memo today. Come on, Mama Vella. We, give, we forgot to love you so much. You're so beautiful. This woman's been with me for over 32 years. Did you hear what I said? She's been a founding member for almost 30 years, but she's been with me for 32 years. And a precious brother, Vela. And Ophi's here today. And is that one of your, is that, is that one of your 179 great-grandchildren? Oh, she told me this, we're coming over here. I said, Grandma, can I say hi to your pastors? And I said, you will. Who said this? London. London? Yeah. You want to say hi, London? Do you want to do you want to come on up here? Can I have a hug? Come on up here. It's okay. Come on, come on, Grandma. Well, look at this guy. I love little children. Marissa, I remember when that was you. Come here, baby. With the teddy bear. Come here, baby girl. Come here, come here. Oh, look at you. This is London? London. Come here, come here, sweetie. This is Alex's daughter. Have I, have I met her before? Oh, this is when she was a little. Look at those beautiful eyes. Let's see on camera. Let the. Oh. This is London. Oh, let me go. Let's everyone see how beautiful. It'll get lighter in just a second here. This is London. I see London. I see France. I see London. How beautiful she is. Isn't she? Oh, look at her. Isn't she so beautiful? Oh, she's looking. Give, give, give a wave, and then you, you'll be able to see yourself wave. Go. Hi, everybody. There you go. She is gorgeous. Oh, she's a gorgeous young lady. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Would you guys excuse me just for one second? Would you excuse Sister Vella and I one second? Just excuse us for a second, would you? I was going to do this. I was going to. We have some other family with us today. Sister Bella, you go back in the middle there, okay? You go back in the middle there. You go back in the middle, Sister Bella. Love you guys, Jeff. Love you guys. All right. This is homecoming week. This is homecoming week. Oh, this is so, so London, you're so pretty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So London, you're so pretty. Yeah, so pretty. Yeah. So Mama Vella, we've known you for over 32 years. Yeah, we love you so and much. I don't forget the day. And I know Ophi doesn't forget it and the rest of the family. And by the way, hi Ophi. Hi. We're going to read about you today in the Bible. <laughs> oh, taste and see. Oh, fee, taste and see. Okay. Yes. And we remember, uh, I, I, I think that you remember too. When you were in the office with Pastor Alarcón. Oh, in Temple of Calvario. Calvario. And um, it was Brother Francisco. You would turn around, and he thought you were Cass. Your son. Yeah. <laughs> For the snaskis. Yeah. And he, he, when he turned around, he was joking with you. I remember he was joking with me, not knowing I was the pastor. Yeah. Or the, or the guest evangelist. Yes. He, whatever he, I was at the time. He went downstairs. <laughs> He went downstairs behind me in the kitchen, and he was so embarrassed. He said, oh, Sister Bella, you know what happened to me? I said, what? I said, no. he said, he looks like your son. And I said, yes. And I said, I cannot wait to meet him. And when I went upstairs, and I saw you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And all my family, Pastor Jim, yeah. it was on the front. And I can never forget when you anoint Frankie, Mary's husband, hands. I can never forget. And I told Frankie a couple of days ago, I said, Frankie, you're going to play again and you're going to sing again. Yes. Because remember that, that you were anointed from America. Yes. And we can never forget that. And my, my 
dear family. I miss you so much. But never forget, when a man of God gives you a word from the Holy Spirit and anoint you, never forget that. Because it will go through. You will come through. You Amen. will. And I know that. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So you're recovering from, uh, was it rotator cuff? It was oh, ro oh, rotator cuff? I remember, uh, uh, Patrick, yeah? Uh, he told me, you gotta do the exercise. You got to, you got to. And I said, oh, they're doing it right now. And next week, I'm gonna go out for the therapy. And I said, okay, Lord. And I told Rosie, Rosie, I wanna face this already. I'm, I know that I'm ready, you know, yes. to go through it. And I know, I went through with my knees, so what is this? This is nothing yeah. for you, my Lord God. And I know you. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you, thank you for your prayers. I can feel it. Because let me tell you something. Even the day that they did this, next day, I couldn't feel no pain at all. Yeah. No pain at all. But I, I came home and, and do, you know, and the nurses said, I mean, you got to take your medicine. And you know, sometimes the medicine makes you kind of uh, crazy or something, you know, but I don't think. Loopy. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I don't take it that often, you know, only when they give me the, uh, the exercise and everything then. But I, I thank the Lord, I mean, because the doctor told me, he said, you know what? You didn't bleed that much that we thought you were going to bleed. I mean, everything went Thank fine. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we love you. We talk. We talk every week. And you have a new phone. Oh, oh, oh Olivia told me that you have a new iPhone. You have an iPhone. On Facebook. So now you can watch yourself. Now you can watch yourself. You know, I, don't, I don't see, I don't, are the Robinsons here today? Is Johnny Robinson here? I don't see him. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Pastor Eddie? Oh, he's not. Okay. Uh, he still has, John, we love you, Johnny. If you're watching at home, Johnny, we love you. We love your family. Uh, Mama Janola, Patricia, we love you. But he still has a flip phone. He still has a, Johnny Wash, uh, Johnny uh, Robinson still has, still has a flip phone. And here you are. Yeah, I, 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 oh my. I've got so, I told Manny and Olivia, I cannot do it. And Manny said, Manny stayed with me all day. <laughs> Manny did? Manny, Manny did. I said, you're going to do it. You're going to do yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, of course, I can answer it, but I cannot sh shut it off. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and they told me the favor ones. That's beautiful. The favor yeah. ones. And I said, okay. But I get, I said, oh my God, I hope the phone doesn't ring. Please don't ring. <laughs> so my sister, forgive me if I don't answer you right away, okay? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, you know, Wednesday during service, Olivia was texting me. She was texting me and she was giving me an update on you and your phone. We have a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with her on Wednesday night because when we went home, we started to uh, talk some more. But I, I think you know Pastor Manny's working here at the church, right? He was, he was, he was telling me that he come to help. Oh, he's been working here. How many months now has Pastor Manny been working with us? So? Since June. He's been helping since us out since June. June. Okay. Yeah, he told me because it was Wednesday or, or Tuesday? Tuesday? Tuesday nights. Tuesday, he's here every uh, Tuesday nights. He's here for hours upon hours. What a servant. What a servant. Yes, he is. So right now he's, he's giving the word today. Okay. Yeah. So we speak blessings over him now yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. May the word of the Lord go forth with power, boldness, clarity, yeah. and may God's kingdom come and yeah. will be done. Yeah. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. But I remember, yeah, I remember when that one brother thought I was your son, Cass. But we speak blessings over your son, Cass, and blessings over your grandson, Cass. We pray blessings over him and all your children. 
and your family, and that God will grant them all the desires of their hearts, and even with Ofa here, and her two brothers, her sisters, and all your... Uh, Sister Val, how many, grand, how many grandchildren have you? Oh, my had? God, how many I have? Just grandchildren. 20-something? 20, 20 27? 27? 27? 27? How, many, how many great-grandchildren? Oh, my God. 30-something? <laughs> and I'm going to have another great-great-great? So great-great? Graviela and Becky. Graviel, Elia, and Graviel, they're going to have a baby girl. Beautiful. So it's about 50 in all, right? Would you say? Wow. No, really. Wow. No, seriously. Seriously. But well, well, Mama Val, we love you. And you know, always we say, I say to you privately, and I say publicly, if there's anything you ever need, we're here. You know, let me tell you something. He just called me a couple of days ago. And he told me, he said, Mama, whatever you need, from, even from the Spanish store, anything you need, I will pick it up. Just call me, and I will pick it up. And I said, thank you, Papa. I take your word for it, but uh, thank you. Thank you for everything you do for me. Thank you. OK? But he wanted to go grocery shopping for me. <laughs> Oh, oh, let me tell you something. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. One day, oh, a couple of weeks ago, Mish cannot pick me up. So he went to pick me, <laughs> pick me up the first time. And he went, she said, I got to do what Mish do, does with me. He said, okay. So what she's saying is, I picked her up for church, and I took her on a date. Because if Mitch could take her on a date, I could take her on a date. <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday morning. So he was. Right there, by the time he was about nine, it was what, 9.15? 9.15. Mm -hmm. And you were waiting outside. I was waiting outside for him. Like a, when you wait for, for what, let me say, okay? You all girls know, and, and I'm a boy too, that when you're waiting for your date. And Chuck, you know about that too. <laughs> <laughs> you're waiting for somebody, you know, oh my God, you don't want to be late. And you want your hair to be straight. You want everything to be perfect, right? Yes. And I was right there waiting for my date. Aww. He's my friend. He's my pastor. And he's my son. Aww. Right? Aww. It's the truth. So he, told me, he said, OK, we're going to go to my town. I said, no, no. It's, it's going to get late. I don't want to be late for him. So we didn't stop at McDonald's, right? Yeah, we, we, went to, we did. No, the first time we did not because you, to tell, you said you had something here at church. Yeah. Oh, I and to I wanted to. For Brother Joe to pray. Right. right. You wanted to be here for prayer. And the second time, okay, he said, we're going to go. Okay. So he, what did you order me, Papa? Coffee? I ordered you coffee. All I remember, you, you wanted like 12 creams or something like that. <laughs> uh, why don't you just order milk, you know? Just, just, just order milk, you know? And I order, you know what I order, Miss? I changed the menu. What? Oatmeal. 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 Nice. Yes. So that's, that's, but we didn't need no biscuit. No biscuit. No biscuit, no. So we did only coffee. Those of you watching at home, aren't you? This is a good story, isn't it? This is the Sister Bella. So that's what that's what we did, Mish, that day, that Sunday. But I thank you. I thank you, Pastor. I thank you, Mama. And I thank you all, my family. I miss you all. And I'm so glad to be home. You know. And how is my Jim David and Janelle? And Charlie. 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 Give my love. And, and, and Mark, give my love to them, OK? Yeah. So I mean, when I came, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm an old spoken lady, I think so, a sister, you know? When I came in, Pastor Jim and Wolfie, I said, Wolfie, hallelujah. Is this today? I saw the parking lot full. And I said, Lord, you've been giving me this vision for a long time. Thank you, Father, for bringing your family home. 
They're coming home, Pastor yes. Chin. They're coming home. Yes. They're Thank coming you. home. Thank you, Lord. And there's many uh, throughout the week. There'll be hundreds of people joining in on the, on, on Facebook. They they watch it again, or they watch it for the first time, and then YouTube, and they go to the website. So God's been so faithful to us. You know, Sister Bella, you know, it's never been about numbers, never. but it's been about reaching people's yes. lives. Yes. You know, so we love. Yes. It. And remember when we when we ran the first office? Oh, no. in, in Streamwood. Yeah. Yes. I remember Olivia used to open the curtain, and she would see thousands and thousands of people come. By, by faith. By right? faith. <laughs> yeah. I remember on a Wednesday night, we had a prayer meeting, yeah. and she was looking to see who was going to be there. Yeah. I said, what are you doing there? And she closed the curtain real quick. She closed the curtain real quick. Yeah. She yeah. Says, I'm just looking, I'm believing, and I'm praying. Yeah. 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 Hey. You know, our next anniversary, we're going to be 30 years. Oh my God. Do you know how many? Do you know how many? Do you know how many churches closed during COVID and never reopened? Never reopened. Now over 10,000 churches a year. We, we're not happy to say that. No, we don't. But by God's grace, we keep going and going and going to the glory. Don't give up. Right. Don't give up. Right. It doesn't matter how things come and look. Don't give up. God will never give us nothing that we don't think that we can, that he thinks that we cannot go through it. He will. He will take you by hand. I was watching this, I've been watching the story of, uh, jo, what, what's the, uh, the one that uh, Moses give, her, give the call to Josh, Joshua? Oh, Rapanda Reki Yanda Reki Yanda. And he thought that he heard wrong. But he went to the mountains and asked God, speak to me. But don't give up, my people. That God will speak to you. Like he did with Moses and Abraham and all the kingdoms. Don't give up. Go for it. Somebody comment on, on, your, on your device. Don't give up with an exclamation mark. I love you and God bless you and I'll see you later. Tell Mama Vella how much you love her. Would you do it? Love you. Love you, Mama Vella. Well, babe, won't you take your mic while I'm down here? Won't you come on up here? Isn't my Sicilian princess so beautiful? Yes. yes. Thank you. So, of course, love you, Sister Vella. Love you, church family, every one of you. And uh, some of you are on vacation. God bless you. But many of you are tuning in. We call this hybrid church. Yes. Like a, like a car that runs on gas and electricity. Well, we have people here that came because they had to use gas to get here. Mm -hmm. Some people may it's... even have gas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we'll let that stay between them. We'll let that stay between them, right? Okay. okay. Some, someone will get it later. <laughs> Marissa will explain it later. Okay. She, she's the teacher, you know. She good, is. Good she's a good some, teacher. Good to have some family back with us. Yes. Oh, we love yes. them so much. Give them all Absolutely. a big God bless you. Come on. <laughs> Amen. But we have hybrid, you know, again, so it, it just amazes me how people are, are members of this church, members yes. of this church and engaging online. That's right. As if they were sitting in this house, mm -hmm. you know, with their tithing, offerings, prayer requests, praise reports, yep. Yep. and they haven't missed a beat. They nope. haven't missed a beat. No. You know? And we love so anyway, so you thank look God so for beautiful. technology. Yes, you look so beautiful. Thank you. Terry, I, I got a haircut yesterday. I did, and my favorite, uh, I can't say beautician, right? I have to say hairstylist. My favorite hairstylist gave me a haircut yesterday, and uh, she doesn't charge at all, but believe me, I pay, okay? <laughs> so w this past Wednesday, you know, I love, I mean, I love being here this morning right now, obviously. Absolutely. But Wednesday night, you just don't know what's going to happen. Joe, 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 You just, Joe, 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 you just don't know what's And Wednesday night, the word of the Lord, I mean, it just, you know, it, it just made me so excited how precious yes. his word and his promises yes. are. Yes. And then, uh, of course, so Wednesday night, Facebook Live, right, guys? Yes. Facebook Live this yes. Wednesday night, yes. yes. And uh, can't wait for that. Seven twenty uh, is when the youth and young adults meet. Seven twenty is when the youth and keep praying for the youth and young adults, especially yes. of of our yeah. of our generation. Because Eddie and Kayleen are doing. Continue such to a pray for them. Awesome job! Yeah, they are. 
And then I know you're going to wait till next week, but you're up here now because uh, Fall Fest is coming. Fall Fest is coming. Yeah, we don't celebrate Halloween, but we do celebrate Fall Fest, yep. right? Yep, we have so that nice alternative. So, nice alternative, yeah. And uh, by the way, Grandma Vella, my Charlie, I know you mentioned Charlie, Grandma Vella. Charlie is doing wonderful. He's now 17 months old, that little guy. Yes. I see him That's almost. So I see him almost every day, and the first words out of his mouth are what? Papa. 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 And then he gets so excited, he starts going like this. Like, and he wants can't me to wait, can't wait for you to pick him up. He, he wants me to take him outside. I said, Charlie. I says, I'm not taking you outside to give Papa a kiss. And he goes like this. <laughs> now he says, Amen. He does. He does. Yes. So sweet. Yeah. So sweet. So anyway, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. So anyway, so of course, this Wednesday, 7 p.m., Facebook Live, yep. 720. We'll yep. the youth and young adults, Pastor Eddie and Kayleen, are doing yep. such an awesome job. With they them. are. But we're going to start preparing for what? Fall Fest, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Now, I know you're going to meet with uh, Marisol Garcia. Yes. Oh, she's such a blessing. Yes. All these, all these dear people are such blessings. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Beautiful. So we're going to start what? Doing what? We're st going to start collecting candy. Ooh. Candy donations for the Fall Fest. Wonderful. And the Fall Fest is going to be like on a... On a Sunday. We're doing it on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Sunday in, while in, children's ministry is going on. In the lower level. Right. All right. Yep. Anything else you want to say to any of these beautiful I just want to say that I love you and I'm so proud of you. And the this morning I woke up with the scripture that speaks about the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Don't give up on your praying. Don't give up on praying. I know we've kind of touched on that through this morning. God hears your prayers, even though you may feel like they're falling to the you wayside or just falling dead. They're not. Continue to pray. Continue to stand. Continue to believe because God's doing it. It's, all, it's happening in the, in, the, in the realms of the heavens. So just continue to stay the task no matter what you feel or see, right? We trust the God that we don't see, but we know he's there, right? Yes. So trust those prayers, that those prayers are going to that unseen God, but very seen God, right? Yes. Love you guys so much. You're the best, the best. Hi, Brad, you are the best, too. Love you. I read all your comments. I love them. Love you. Bless you. Love you, too. Love you, too. Hey, Jeffrey Glass, happy birthday to you. Wish Jeffrey a happy birthday. Happy birthday. All the way out, all the way out in Rockford, Loves Park, Rockford. Uh, Miss Medea, Miss you? that's you in the back there. Why don't you stand up, Miss Medea? Miss Medea, give her a happy birthday. God bless you. And Anne Marie is in multimedia. Is she in the sound room? Yes, happy birthday, sweetie pie. And happy, is this one year anniversary, Edwin and Laura? This is this, where's Laura? She was just here. Was she raptured? There she is. One year. Married to Edwin for one year. She survived. Where's Edwin? Out in the lobby there? You survived. Nah, he's a good man. You know, it's funny. We were doing a Wednesday night. Okay, Edward, just. So, 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 sh I <laughs> All right. There's a few things I've learned in life. Anna, there's a few things I've learned in life. You know, sometimes it takes a while to learn. Sometimes you make mistakes. I mean, I, I mean, I've hardly ever made any mistakes, but I know you guys never made any. <laughs> but out of all the mistakes I've ever made in my life, one of them I've learned from, and that is never get between two Puerto Ricans. <laughs> so, Laura, Edwin, you know, I love you, but we'll just... Uh, Never get between two Ita never get between uh, two Italians, especially when they're Sicilian. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh boy! You see, Pastor Joni. Oh, she's so sweet. She's so loving, and she is. 
But if you ever see a vein pop up right here, <laughs> Annie, you remember years ago, if you ever see a vein pop up, because you were up close and personal, if you ever see a vein pop up there, just back off, you know? <laughs> oh my, we're having a lot of fun today. But this would be one year, huh, guys? Wow. And I remember, talk about Facebook Live. I remember they were commenting. And they were going, you know, you know, during COVID, we'd have, what, 1,200 comments during, on a Wednesday night? 1,200 comments on a Wednesday night during COVID. Now we get about five, 600. And uh, on just on Wednesday nights. But, you know, she was commenting, he was commenting, and the Lord spoke to my heart. Spoke to my heart that he's going to put them together. And I've never said anything, but they're together. Amen. And you're still together, right, guys? Uh, <laughs> no, they are together. Anyway, happy anniversary. And if you have a birthday or anniversary in this month of October, this month of harvest, we thank the Lord for you. Thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Okay, let's move on. So if you would put on the screen, please. I mentioned I was going to talk about Ophi today, didn't I? And, you know, well, guys, before you know it, it's going to be our 30th anniversary before you know it. And Sister, Sister Val, I know, I know it's difficult for you right now because your, your arm, you know, I know Mitch is, you know, he's, oh, six months. Yeah. You know, this big, strong guy, The Rock. Oh, it's going to take me six months. You know, probably, <laughs> probably for you, it'll take six days, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you didn't ask me to say this. You didn't ask me to say this. But when are you going to be able to make tamales again? Yeah. Pretty soon? Okay. Okay. Yes. I like, um, I love, yeah, because my daughter's baby me are doing this, doing that, but I, I, I'm not perfect that I always do. I know. Like How many look forward to Sister Vela's tamales? Yes. Yeah. I sure do. And, 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 and Jim David, James David? Oh, Jim David. James David loves, and he loves you. Yes. He, my, my, my son, San Diego, he loves you so much. Janelle loves you. Love Charlie you. loves you. Mark loves you. We all love yes. you. I know he is innocent. I know, just like his grandpa, he's so innocent. Uh, anyway, guys, let's put on the screen, if you would. If you would put on the screen, Proverbs 34, Proverbs 34, verse 8. Let's start there. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, fee. Oh, taste and see. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Oh, I said Ophi. I was kidding around because of Ophi. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Watch this now. Watch this. Blessed, blessed. Somebody shout blessed. Blessed. Sure beats curse, doesn't it? Yes. Blessed is the man or woman, right? Who trusts in him. Some trust in their finances, their riches. Some trust in the stock market. These days, I wouldn't trust in too many things. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. The only way you're going to trust in the Lord is by tasting him. Indulging in his word. Believing his promises. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman who puts their trust in the Lord. Not in the economy, not in the election, not in the past, present, or future, but puts their trust in the Lord. Somebody say, the Lord. The Lord. Now, this is a promise for you, church, because this is a giving church. I just paid you a compliment. This is a giving church. Those online today, they're giving people. So taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And now look at verse number 9, please. Oh, look at this. Oh, fear the Lord. You, his saints, specifically the church. Oh, fear, that is reverence, respect. Put him first in all things. Your time, your tithe, your talent. 
Fear the Lord. Doesn't mean be afraid. It means reverence the Lord. You, his saints, not his saints, his saints. Watch this. And then there is no want, need to those that fear him. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. America needs to turn to Jesus. America has given up on God. But hear me, but God has not given up on America. God has not given up on America. And look at here, folks. This is for you. This is not to get more money because you people already give. This is to remind you of your harvest. Oh, fear the Lord. You know how many Christians don't fear the Lord? You know how many Christians have fear in the economy and the world system? And many of them love God. They just need to snap out of it. But oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, his blood-bought ones. Even though this is old covenant, he knew that someday he'd go to that cross. Yes. There's no need, there's no want to those that fear him. So today be encouraged as we prepare our hearts not our finances I'll say that again as we prepare our hearts to give to the Lord Mama Baina we love you too precious Mama and we hope to see you here soon we know you're catching your healing we hope to see you here soon Mama Baina we love you so much but those that fear the Lord they're blessed beyond measure. Those who honor the Lord are blessed beyond measure. Our fear is not in this world system. Our trust is not in the world system. We don't have fear for us. Our fear is in the Lord. Our fear is in the Lord. Let me ask you a question, guys. Am I the only one? Yesterday, I got a letter from the government. And you know, whenever you get a letter from a government, from the government, you know, you say, oh boy. And it had my middle initial, I. And whenever I see my middle initial, I, I think it's usually pretty serious. My middle initial, my name, Innocenzo in Italian, innocent. But I got a check from the government yesterday for $100. Did you get one too? Your son got one? Did anybody get a check from the government? I, mean, I don't want to know about your business. You got one, Nancy? You got one for 50? Medea, you got your son got one? 300? I mean, yesterday? Anybody else? I got a check in the mail yesterday for $100. Now, let me tell you what's interesting about $100. Hear me very carefully, guys. What's very interesting about $100 for me and Pastor Joni. It's intimate for us because over 30 years ago, we had nothing. We lived in Orlando. We had nothing. And somebody placed $100 in my hand. Pastor Benny was ministering out of town. And somebody put $100 in my hand, and we knew it was not big enough to be our harvest, so we made it our seed. And we've never looked back. We've never looked back. So I thought it was interesting yesterday to receive $100. Now, $100 can't pay off your house. $100 can hardly fill up your car with gas. But to me, it was from the Lord reminding me, so long as you always put me first and fear me, you'll never be in want. So today, Father, I thank you for these dear people. Father, we're not here to raise money. We're here to raise a standard. And I thank you, Lord, that you said that you're holy and the tithe is holy. And so long as you're holy, the tithe remains and it remains holy. And Lord, you said, prove me now, says the Lord, 
and we have. If I will not open up the windows of heaven that there will not be room enough to receive. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we worship you with our tithes and offerings that render their harvest, especially, Lord, on this Feast of Tabernacles, harvest, first fruits, oblations, I pray, God, that your people will never be in want, that you'll always be El Shaddai more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you giving online, those of you hybrid out of town, you can give right now. You can go to the bottom of the screen. You see ourencounter.com. You can give online. Donate PayPal. It's safe and secure. The church pays the surcharge. Church pays the surcharge. You can do it here in the sanctuary. If you're in the area today but you couldn't come, you can come later today behind the building to the black secured mailbox. And you can drop in your tithe and offering there. You can call the church. If you, if you get a voicemail, just leave your name and someone will get back to you. You can put it in U.S. mail. And in the sanctuary today, there should be a tithing offering envelope under your seat. And if you don't find one, and if you'd like one, we don't do things under compulsion. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. I like Lori. Lori. You guys remember Lori Barone, right? We all know Lori Barone. Faithful member of this church. Lived in Texas for quite a few years. Faithful member. Now she's in Florida. She's saved, thank God. Faithful member. Fa faithful member. Candy, faithful member. I can mention more. I can mention more. But faithful members. Faithful members. In Tampa, faithful members. Thank you, Lord. So anyway, if you'd like an offering envelope, there should be one under your seat if you need one. But please, please, please write down your prayer request. You see how we pray on Wednesday night. You see how Joe prays on Wednesday night. But we don't wait till Wednesday. If you have a prayer request, write it down. Praise report, write it down. If you're using check, you can write it out to encounter the church. If credit card, there's information there. And thank the Lord, according to these verses we just read, that you'll never be in want. Somebody say, I'll never be in want. Somebody comment on Facebook, I'll never be in want. On YouTube, I'll never be in want. We declare and decree that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Love you all so much. If our arms are long enough, we'd give you one big hug. If our lips are big enough, we'd give you one big kiss. Love you so much. Love you, England. <laughs> Love you, England. Love you, England. Love you, Ireland. Italy, we love you, Italy. I'll be, Lord willing, I'll be with you next year. Lord willing. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship God. Such a sweet presence of the Lord here. Amen. Thank you, Lamb of God. for this feast we call this feast blessed Father to the glory of the Lord thank you Lord Amen Amen I want to continue today and perhaps conclude this message that the Lord's given me on conquering life one day at a time how many know that life can be hard anybody ever discover life can be hard Life has twists, turns. Life can be so unpredictable. Things can change just like that. But nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing catches God off guard. Absolutely nothing. 
And several months ago when I was going through a major, major trial, I said, Lord, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, lest I myself become a castaway. I said, I cannot become a castaway. I said, I need to love you and keep loving you with all my heart, all my might, all my strength. But Lord, this test, I remember a couple years ago when we were meeting outside the parking lot drive-in service, I know April had a prophetic word that I was going to go through a test and that I would pass the test. And uh, I know God is so faithful and I'll let him be the judge and the, the one who grades the test. How many know it's the teacher that grades the test, not the student? Yes. Think about that. It's the teacher who grades the test, not the student. But can I tell you something? We have a lot of church folk who are grading the test rather than allowing the apostle to grade the test. Yeah. Or more importantly, our heavenly father grade the test. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But life is filled with surprises. Things happen unexpectedly. and We don't understand why things happen the way they do at times. And there's so much mental health issues, so many mental health issues in the body of Christ. It's, I wouldn't even know where to begin on that. It's like we need a separate service just for those dealing with mental health crises. So many pastors, now over 2,000 pastors every month are just saying goodbye to ministry. It's not because they don't love God. It's not because they're in rebellion. It's just because they just can't take it. And it can be so difficult. I've got good news for you today, by the way. And then there's anxiety. People with dealing with the anxiety. Currently, right now, 50%, 50% of pastors take medication before they come into the pulpit to calm their nerves because of fear of the people. Fear what people are thinking. Fear will they come back. Fear, just fear, period. 50% of pastors are taking Xanax today. People are dealing with rejection, disappointments, discouragement, depression, brokenheartedness, loneliness, unrest. The list goes on. Fear of the future. Will my son be in heaven? You know, when the Lord returns, will my family be left behind? There's so much to think about. That's not even funny. Uh, a suicide, cancer, Cancer's gone. It's in remission. Come back. Will it stay back? Will it not come back? Stress. Oh, stress, 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 stress. And, and these are such ugly things. And I want to remind you that James 4.14 tells us that life is but a vapor. And it just comes and it just goes. We had a lady in our church. Anna, you remember, girls, you remember Tia Licht. She lived till she was 100. She lived till she was 100. And when we had the party for her there in Streamwood for her 100th birthday, I think it was a 100th birthday, we had the cake for her. And I asked her, I said, Tia, what's it like being 100? She says, it's like gone by like it was 30 years. Life is but a vapor. That's what John 4, 14 says. It's but a vapor. It's here for a little time, then it vanishes away. You see, we know that John 10, 10 tells us, is it okay if I don't shout and scream today and spit all over, you know, like, you say, what do you mean by spit? You know, say it, don't spray it. But I just feel just in intimacy this morning just to share with you in the family room this morning. But we all know that John 10, 10 tells us that the thief comes, he comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But you see, before he wants to destroy us, he wants to take us as, as a captive. He wants to take us as a POW, a prisoner of war. Just the way one who's captured, whether in Vietnam, Mark Marty, you've been there, and we thank you for your service, sir. And, but before they want to kill you, they want to first torture you. And the enemy, before he wants to destroy us, he wants to torture us. And the way he wants to torture, to torture us is by every day causing us to find something to live in fear for. Something to fear. Something to be unhappy about. Something to be angry about. Something to get offended over. And that's the work of the enemy. Part of that's the work of our flesh. But the enemy, his design is to torture us. And he knows that his victory is 
that if I can wipe you out for today, maybe not take you out, but wipe you out for that day to where you're, you're walking in depression, loneliness, fear, anxiety, then he's accomplished his goal for that day. But let me remind the devil, and let me remind all of us watching and engaging today, Jesus said, I've come that you might, not will, you might now have life and life more abundantly. So all these things try to come on us. What's going to happen tomorrow? How's this going to happen? How's, gonna, how's God going to provide? How's he going to do this? How's he going to do that? I told you a couple months ago at Evangel Assembly of God just down the street here at Precious Church. On a Sunday morning, all 12 of the worship team, the band, the exalters, just walked off never to come back. How am I going to do this? How am I going to? How's this going to happen? How's this? Listen to this. Listen to this. Joe, I know we've read this, but how many know you don't eat breakfast once a week? You eat breakfast every day. You hear what I'm saying? Or should, or you eat a meal every day. But Joe, go in, in my living Bible, if you would, there to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. And again, I, we've read this before, but how many know we woke up today with new challenges? Yes. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? So we need to, part of wisdom means to keep hearing it and repeating it and pounding it. So listen very carefully. I'm not going to ask him to read it again, but read it, read it slowly, Joey. Read it slowly and let's soak this in. Soak this in. Say, I will. Go ahead, Joey. Matthew 25, Matthew 6, I'm sorry, 25 through 34. Go ahead, Jojo. So my counsel is, don't worry about things. Now, this is the counsel of the Lord. That's right. Okay. So my counsel is, don't worry about things, food, drink, and clothes, for you, are, for you already have life and a body, and they are far more important than what to eat and wear. Look at the birds. They don't worry about what to eat. They don't need to sow or reap or store up food, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than they are. Will all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothes? Look at the field lilies. They don't worry about theirs. Yet King Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that, they are, that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he more surely care for you? O oh, men of little faith, so don't worry at all about having enough food and clothing. Why be like the heathen? For they take pride in all these things and are deeply concerned about them. But your heavenly Father already knows perfectly well that you need them. And that's, as we know, Matthew 6, 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Go ahead, Joey. And he will give them to you if you give him first place ah. in your life. And live as he wants to. So he said, don't worry. Don't worry. But we have to, I have to, put him first in my life. And it's so easy not to. So how do I conquer then life one day at a time? Well, we just heard from Jesus through Joe. But it's so important to prioritize, especially today with the devices that we have. These devices can be a blessing, and it can also be something else. But rather than waking up to emails, waking up to text messages, how about waking up to the Word of God? Seriously. And it's such a temptation, me included, it's such a temptation who called me? Who left a message? But the priority is God first. And especially in our culture, 
God first. It's important to have the breakfast of champions. That doesn't mean we have to have a full buffet spiritually. But if it's just one verse, an app on the phone that we taste and eat and digest and let it be that word for today. I think of the words of our Lord, the model prayer, our Father. How many know He's not just your daddy? He's our daddy. He's my daddy. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy, hallowed be thy name. Something I pray every day. May thy kingdom come. Not my kingdom. May thy kingdom come. May thy will be done on earth or in this earthen vessel as it is in heaven. You want to talk about conquering life one day at a time? Think about heaven. As it is in heaven. Not how it is in South Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina. As it is in heaven. Give me this day, my Lord, my daily bread. For Jesus, you are my bread. You are the bread of life. Give me this day, not yesterday, not tomorrow. Give me this day, my daily bread. Because nothing is fresher than your daily bread. No revelation is greater than the now word. Give me, Lord, I pray, this day, today. Today, Lord. Today, Lord. The devil wants to defeat me today, Lord. Fear wants to grip me today, Lord. Sickness wants to grip me today, Lord. Pain wants to grip me today, Lord. So give me this day, Jesus. You are my daily bread. Give me this day my whole loaf. The whole loaf. Not just a piece. But the whole loaf. A slice of joy. Slice of peace. Slice of wisdom. Slice of discernment. Give me this day my daily bread. And then, Lord, forgive me my trespasses. As I forgive those who've trespassed against me. God, lead me not into temptation. Help me, God. Deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power. You're sovereign. You're large and in charge. Your ways are higher than my ways. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Not just once a week on a Sunday morning. Thine is the glory forever and ever and ever. Folks, we're talking about conquering life one day at a time. Believe me, I know it works. We'll be 30 years as a church. Believe me, it works. In less than two years, 50 years in ministry. That's my jubilee. It works. Somebody shout, it works. Somebody comment online, it works. But we have to prioritize. I just can't say, I'll find time for this. No, 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 no. have to prioritize start with the breakfast of champions have to ask them for my daily bread you know it would be nice in a perfect world but it doesn't mean we have to spend three hours on our knees but to start right and make it work and get the best out of it how do I conquer one day life one day at a time by depending on his mercies, yes. which are new every morning. Yes, I said they're new every morning. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Call upon his grace, his ability to do in me, which I can't do for myself. How do I conquer life one day at a time? By walking by faith and not by sight. How do I conquer life one day at a time? By speaking the word. Yes. How do I conquer life one day at a time on a practical level? Enjoy, have fun. You may not be in a fun situation, but have fun. I like to take out my Uno cards. Anybody ever play Uno? 
I like to play Uno. I take out my Uno cards. I said, come on, babe, let's play Uno. She said, I don't want to play Uno. I, let, I said, watch, well, I'm tired of it. I said, I'm not tired of it, okay? So we'll compromise. We'll play a little Scrabble or something. How many know there are natural things in life you can do? To, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You know, in fact, Ecclesiastes, put it on the screen, guys. This one will blow you away. We've read this before. Uh, uh, Joe, if, if you see. And, but put it on the screen, guys, Ecclesiastes 8.15. And while you put that on the screen, Joe's going to read it from, from my living Bible as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 15. If you put it on the screen now, I'd appreciate that. Please, thank you. So I commanded, or I commended, enjoyment because a man has nothing better under the sun now guys you can interpret this the way you will I'm just telling you what the word says enjoyment because a man has nothing better under the sun than to eat drink and be merry you didn't know that was in the bible did you now, don't hear what I'm not saying now, okay? Eat, drink, and be merry, for this will remain with him in his labor. Ah. In other words, God wants you to, to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Okay? All the days of your life which God gives under the sun. In other words, God wants you to have a good meal and enjoy it. He wants you to enjoy natural things. I told you, for me, I like to make the bed in the morning. I don't like, some people say, well, you know, it's only going to get messed up during, at night. When, so why, why make the bed? Well, if you know, first of all, there's no doctrinal, de, doctrinal statement in the Bible that says you have to make your bed. All right? There's nothing in the Bible. I know that's enough to cause division in the body of Christ, but, you know. <laughs> Oh, dear God of mercy, Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Come before the midterm elections. Oh, God. Come before the next president. Oh, dear God. Oh, God. Oh, But I like to make the bed. Why? Because it's a sense, it's a sense of accomplishment. It's a sense to me that this is, it doesn't make me more spiritual. It's a, it's a new day. Joe, you were in my bedroom two nights ago. Yes. Pastor Eddie, yes. you were in my bedroom two nights ago. Yes. What did my bed look like? It was pretty pristine. Pristine? My, my bed was pristine? Yes. Joe, 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 Joe. All, all made, all ordered, looked good. I make the bed. That's my job. I make the bed in the morning. <laughs> Let me do my job. That's what I make the bed in the morning. Because then when I, I feel it's a sense of accomplishment. It's a good way to start my day. Yes. And then when I go to bed at night, it doesn't remind me of the day before. How many know the way you go to bed at night usually is the way you wake up in the morning? That's, right. That's why the word says in Ephesians 4, 26, what? Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. If you go to bed angry, you usually wake up angry. If you go to bed with unforgiveness, you usually wake up with unforgiveness. And it's a vicious circle. It's like a hamster in a wheel. Woo, 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 you know? But, but it is. So, so these are some things. You know, how about getting some hobbies? How, I, I like, I told you guys, I like sometimes at night after I pray with my wife, then I pray alone with the Lord. And, and I, I, I enjoy watching a couple old-time shows on TV. You know, not, not ugly stuff, not perverted stuff, but I like watching because they make me laugh. You know, I, I read somewhere recently in, in a doctor's magazine that, that people who laugh more live longer. People who laugh more, who are happier, live longer. And in fact, what I read was an average of two years. How many of you, you can do a lot in two years? Right. Right. See what I'm saying? Now, because we know what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. The merry heart does good like a medicine, like a medicine. Now, in Proverbs, I was going to have you read something else earlier, Joe, but read Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Read Proverbs 20, 24, but put it, on, put, put it on the screen, and then Joe's going to read it from the Living Bible, okay? Proverbs 20, 24, you guys are doing so awesome back there. Proverbs 20, 24, put that on the screen, please. And then, Joe, you get ready to read it from the Living Bible, okay? A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Wow. I'll read that again. A person, a woman, a man's steps are of the Lord. It should be. 
How then can a man understand his own way? In other words, when you try to figure out your life, you're not going to conquer life one day at a time. But in the Living Bible, it says, Joe, 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 Joe. Since the Lord is directing our steps, why try to understand everything that happens along the way? See, you see, our minds, we get, what, 6,200 thoughts a day on the average coming into our mind? And you have these thoughts that come into your mind. Read that again, Joe, 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 Joe. Since the Lord is directing our steps, why try to understand everything that happens along the way? So if the Lord is directing your steps, just trust. Trust. Something happens, it didn't catch him by surprise. We're going to overcome. We're going to trust in him. We're not going to have to think about it. We're just going to trust in him. Romans 8.31. Put that on the screen, please. Romans 8.31. And Joe, I want you to read that from the Living Bible as well. Romans 8.31. Please put that on the screen if you would. What then shall we say to these things? What things? Tribulations, peril, sword, nakedness, loneliness, disappointments, rejection. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? Amen. Conquering life one day at a time. Woo! Conquering life one day at a time tells me if God is for me, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. I mean, I like to please people, but I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please the Lord. I don't want to see people sad. I want to see people, I want to see people happy. I don't want people to be mad at me. I want people to be happy. But at the end of the day, what shall we say, declare with our mouth, to every situation that happens in life on a daily basis, if God is for me? Somebody shout, who can be against me? Who can be against me? Joey, read that in the Living Bible, if you would. What can we ever say to such wonderful things as these? Yes. If God is on our side, who can ever be against us? There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Let me wind this down. How do I conquer life one day at a time? I think I've given you plenty here throughout the last several weeks. I think I've given you plenty. And going forward, folks, I can't do it for you. You go to see your doctor. He can tell you. He can write you the prescription. But he'll still be there for you. And he'll still help you. And he'll still remind you. I can do that. But we all have our own journey that we have to walk out. But at Encounter Church, you'll never walk alone. Amen. 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 You'll never walk alone. Right. But one of the things that I do for me, and it's worked for me, I'm 65, been in ministry for a while. But one of the things that's worked for me to conquer life one day at a time is to have hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But hope in my eternal life. You see, 1 Peter 2.11 on the screen, please. 1 Peter 2.11. It says that we are foreigners. We're strangers. We are aliens. Beloved, that's a term of endearment. Look at that, I beg you. I be, I, in other words, I beg you because some people are so earthly minded, so fearful minded. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, stain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul, you know, vain imaginations, fear, anxiety. I want to remind you today that we are pilgrims. We are foreigners. In Philippians 3.20, please, 
to let the people see that. I want to, especially them to see it at home. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Our citizenship. Look at this, folks. Our citizenship is in heaven. Next year, I plan to go to Italy. Next year, I plan to go to, to Europe, uh, to, to Ireland, to England, Lord willing. And I have to renew my passport to do so. Because every 10 years, it's amazing how 10 years can go just like that. Boy. But that's my U.S. citizenship. But my true citizenship is in heaven. Watch this, guys. Watch this. From which we eagerly wait, eagerly. Paul is saying, I'm not looking to die. I'm not going to walk in depression, although it tries to hit me. But I just can't wait for the Savior to come back. The Lord Jesus Christ. When I see what's happening in America, when I see the strife and division, I lift up my head and say, Lord, I'm reminded that it's not a man or woman that's going to change our nation or the nations of the earth. And that I'm not going to be here forever the way I am because my citizenship is out of this world. And I eagerly, I can't wait, Lord. I'm so excited. I'll utilize these days until you come. Teach me to number my days that I may gain a heart of wisdom. But until then, Lord, I'm reminded that I live with an eternal perspective. In Hebrews 11, please put on the screen. Hebrews 11, I'm closing here. Hebrews 11, verse 10, please. Hebrews 11, verse 10. I'm talking about Abraham. For he waited for the city which has foundations. Listen to this, guys whose builder and maker is God. Let me ask you something today. Whose city are you looking for? What city are you looking for? Abraham saw something beyond natural Israel, whose builder and maker was God. What gives me hope, what allows me to conquer life one day at a time, is me being able to say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to win today no matter what. But soon and very soon, yes. Yes. I'm going to see the king. Yes. Look, yes. look at 14. If you drop down, please, to verse number 14, if you would. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. My homeland security is not on the border of Mexico. My homeland security is not on the border of Texas. In all due respect to both countries. My homeland security is that place that awaits me. And not just a place that you can walk on streets of gold, but a place where we can see Jesus. A place where there's no more sickness, no more migraine headaches, no more cancer, no more MS, no more anything but being in the presence of Jehovah forever and ever. Look, it gets better. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. And truly, if they had called to mind, because we have the ability to think anything, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had an opportunity to return. Folks, this is important. While we live on this earth and conquer life one day at a time, don't put your stock in the next 10, 20, 30 years, but in your next home. While we want to conquer now, and we are, and we will, look at verse 16, please. But now they desire a better Listen to this. That is a heavenly country. Somebody say heavenly country. country. Folks, you know what causes me to conquer life one day at a time? I'm just being very blunt. You know what causes me not to quit ministry? And I love God. I love his people. Is the fact 
that I'm looking for a heavenly country. I live for a heavenly country. And that gives me hope to keep standing. That gives me hope to not take on depression and rejection. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Folks, does this encourage you today? Yeah. Hebrews 13, 14 is very short. Hebrews 13, 14. But look at the screen, if you would. Hebrews 13, 14. Short verse. For we, I'm sorry, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. How do I conquer life one day at a time? Living with an eternal perspective, prioritizing, seeing how many people I can reach to bring to heaven with me. Revelation 21.4, I love these two verses. 21.4, 21.5, I'm just going to read part of them to you. God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. I spoke to my dearest friend, was it last night, babe, or two nights ago? Pastor Andy. Last night? Friday night. I was on the phone with him, and he just reminded me about his precious son, Andrew who left this earth at 20 years old. He reminded me, he reminded me of his granddaughter who left this earth at 16. Yet this morning he's preaching down by Atlantic City, New Jersey, and has been for nearly 50 years. My God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. And I close in the next verse, just part of the verse, verse 5, Revelation 21, 5. Behold, I make all things new. Notice it doesn't say I'll make new things. You need to catch this. He didn't say I'll make new things. He says I'll make all things new. That means you're going to be you, but you're going to be a new you. This has been the word of the Lord. We're in this race together. We're in this fight together. And just when you overcome one obstacle, Mama Lucy's here today. She'll tell you she's old enough. Just when you overcome one obstacle and you say, praise the Lord, there'll be another one waiting for you. But guess what? You'll be able to once again say, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we're winners. Yeah. We win. We're overcomers. We're world overcomers. I said we're world overcomers. What you may be going through now is not going to last. God's turning it around. You know, here we are. We're in a new season. It's fall. It's fall. But tomorrow's going to be in the 70s. See what I'm saying? And when spring comes... Say, wow, spring is here. It's going to be in the 30s. <laughs> For a while. What I'm saying is when God brings you in a new season, yeah. it may not feel right, but it is right. Yeah. It may not look right, but it is right. Let's stand to our feet and give God praise today. Come on. You at home, come on. Somebody give God praise for the word of the Lord. Give him praise for the word of the Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you the glory.
We give you the worship. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Just remain standing before you go. Gio, come on up here, son. Come on up, son, and just seal this word right now. Seal this word right now, son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. And real quick, just God brought it to me. You remember the first, the first week that you started this message. I was here, and I'll be vulnerable because I feel like... Yeah, you were weeping like a baby. I was. Go ahead, I'll let you talk. And just take these, take these practical, take these spiritual moments where we can use to really conquer life one day at a time because it can be overwhelming, everything you go through in a week, in the natural, right? Uh, But the first week that Apostle started this message, just going through a lot, going through so much right here, weeping, and I think it was, I know it was that word that just started and that's been flowing through these weeks of let's really take life one day at a time and rely on him. When we rely on our own strength, we rely on our own understanding, that's where we get caught up. That's where the depression, the anxiety, the stress, and the natural hits. And just thank you for bringing this word forth because I know it's a word for our generation, for every generation that's specifically dealing with all of this. When you said people deal with bruises inside that you can't see, that's, that happens a lot more than people think. So let's pray for those people uh, and, and just thank you once again before I pray for, the, for this. You're welcome. Week. Thank you, Lord. And we thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus now that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Yes. Cleanse us, Lord, we pray. Cleanse Jimmy. Cleanse us. Yes. Purify us, we pray. And Lord, Father God, we pray for this word, Lord, Father God, that we receive today. We pray, Lord, Father God, for everybody that's dealing with that anxiety, that stress, that depression, Lord, Father God. We pray, God, that you are the one that can come in and comfort them. Lord, Father God, that you are the one that can bring peace and joy, Lord, Father God, that as we start our day, may we learn to prioritize you, Lord, Father God. The days that we learn to prioritize you are the days that will go smoother because we know that We are starting the day with an eternal perspective, Lord Father God. And we pray, Lord Father God, for anybody in this building, anybody that has family in this building that's dealing with that anxiety, that depression, Lord Father God. We command it to go in your name, Jesus. Your name that heals everything, Lord Father God. Your name that holds the utmost power, Father God. We pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gio. Give Gio a big God bless you. Thanks, brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for his word. So when I, when I go to bed at night, in addition to uh, everything else I told you that I do, I look up to heaven. At this time, usually, after I get done praying with Pastor Joni, at this time, usually she's sleeping. It takes me a while to fall asleep. Her, she, she's out, you know. So, but I pray and I look up at, at the ceiling and beyond the ceiling. I said, Lord, thank you. I say this every night. Thank you for another day of life, L-I-F-E. And I say, Lord, it's another day closer to glory. And it's not an escapism gospel. You understand that. But our our real home, our eternal home. So, folks, if our arms were long enough, we'd give you one big hug. If our lips were big enough, we'd give you one big kiss. One big kiss. We pray you have a marvelous Monday, terrific Tuesday, wonderful Wednesday, tremendous Thursday. Fabulous Friday, sensational Saturday, and another super Sunday to the glory of the Lord. Wednesday, Facebook Live, 7 p.m. Youth and young adults, Zoom, 7.20 p.m. Till we meet again, may heaven's best be yours. Those in section one, section two, section three, give a big God bless you to those who've engaged from all over the country, all over the world. Give them a big God bless you. We love you all. God bless you.